heck of a game. Uh, well coached. I think during every trick play they, they did, they worked. It was a w wonderful timing of it. Our defense didn't show up today by any means. Offensively, we, we got it done, and I'm still replaying that last play uh, in overtime. <laughs> Not the last play, the second to the last play that we didn't come up with. It, it don't seem like that's, that was real. It's kind of surreal. But overall, it was a great game. Great for the viewers, great for um, HBCU, just just great overall game. Hats off to that coaching staff, the head coach, all those players, uh, the fan base, the cheerleaders who I got opportunity to meet yesterday while I was getting a haircut. Um, hats off to them. So I'm uh, very unfortunate. Much love to all the JSU fans. We came up short once again. Don't know what to say, but I'm going to find it today. Yes. Doc, this is Dr. Gaville inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good afternoon, Coach Sanders. How you doing, sir? With that saying, at the end of the game, as you talk about replaying the second before the last, but actually, if you if you would have scored in that drive, would you have went to two or you just play it all out? I'd have played it all out. I'd have played it all out. Um, I, I, I'm very trusting of us, and I felt like I kept feeling like the defense was going to get it together sooner or later. They was going to put it together, but. Uh, Shoot, you can't take nothing away from them. They played their butts off. I think they ran three plays in this whole game and it was very effective with those three plays. Bill Troji, Sporting News. Uh, yesterday you said the, the emotions of, of the season ending would be tempered a little bit because you yeah. know you and Shadur will probably be playing or yeah. you know being together again. After such an emotional finish, you still feel that way? Um, the emotions came before the game. In the pre-game uh, pre speech, it was, uh, you guys get to see it uh, probably in three days or something like that. I think Tuesdays, we always put it out on Tuesdays. It was it was something to behold. It was a moment. It was a moment. The whole theme uh, of the message was now. Just that word, now. Paul Wilson, HBC Day. Coach, one thing you emphasized all during your time was HBCUs play good football and there are good coaches there. Yes. Just talk, just expound on that. Um, I, I just, I can't speak for the coaches and I don't know if that's the coach's dream in HBCU just to remain. I say that because there's some wonderful, very talented coaches that can coach their butts off, not just advance to a higher level of college football, but these, some of these guys should get an opportunity to coach in the NFL. Uh, I know Willie Simmons personally, and he is unbelievable as a head coach, as a coordinator, he, he whatever, whatever he chooses to do. Um, and I hired uh, Coach Dancy on my staff because of how good of a coach he is in a desolate place that he probably would have never won, but he, this man can coach his butts off. Uh, coach McNair at all corners, I could go on and on and on and they don't get credit they really don't and anytime I can shine light on them I'm not just doing it just to shine light because these guys are really good and they should be uh, noticed they should be uh, focused upon coach yes. Sanders uh, Mike Washington Dr. Cabell's inside the HBCU sports yes uh, immediately after the game mm -hmm. what was your message what were the words you imparted to those men uh, obviously, you know, all kinds of emotions. So yeah. What was your message? I don't recall, but it was, uh, my, my stuff is not planned. Um, so I don't even recall because it, it just, you know, once we got them all off the field and, and did the fight song and I got a chance to shower and to reflect a little bit and think, then I just went out there and we prayed uh, as a team, like as we always do. Then I just gave them whatever God gave me. I don't even recall. Uh, I'm pretty sure we recorded it. We record every day. You, you know I keep receipts. So you'll probably see that. I don't know what my son schedules that to, to come out, but it was very uh, thoughtful. It was very thoughtful. Um, and it was still dealing with the theme of the now. I, I miss these guys already, man. Like, like I love them. Like, I don't know how other coaches get down, but these young men, as well as young women that's on the staff, the equipment team and the training staff, we're, we're different. I think one of my gentlemen from uh, Colorado, are you here? Um, he's been telling me and doing a wonderful job. 
and he wanted to see how we move. Um, so he's been really talking to a, a multitude of kids on our team, and one of the things that he um, regurgitated to me was like, man, this is a family, right? He said, this is a darn family. I said, yeah, I mean, it's not easily uh, conceived, but we are. We love like that. We love like that. We truly do. Two more questions. Coach, Wilton Jackson, Sports Illustrated. Um, when Travis Hunter caught that touchdown pass, what went through your mind? That's the first part. And then the second part of the question I want to ask is, how do you view your legacy at Jackson State now? Uh, when Travis caught the touchdown pass, like, all right, well, we, we finally, like, um, I was expecting that a um, couple plays prior, but we finally got it at the end. Make sure we hit the extra point. I'm thinking ahead. Um, <laughs> I don't play or coach for legacy. I coach for kids. I coach for resolutions. I coach for love and passion. It's not a job to me. Um, you know, I read the stuff every now and then. I don't read everything because I ain't got that kind of time. But to even fathom the fact that I would do something for money and, and God has been good to me financially, that blows my mind. Because you, you didn't say that when I was in the hospital for a month and I came on the sideline in a wheelchair. Did I do that for money? When I'm reaching in my pocket and, and, and paying for stuff, did I do that for money? When I'm loving on these kids and doing stuff that you would even fathom that a coach would do, did I do that for money? Money don't move me. I move money. <laughs> coach Roland Martin, there were two emotional moments after the game. You were yeah. picking players off the bench. Yes. But also in the tunnel, uh, you embrace Robert Brazil. Yeah. Uh, and both of you are very emotional. Talk yeah. about those two uh, situations after the game. Um, I wanted to have a last opportunity to speak to my team as a unit. So that's why I was trying to get them in uh, and comfort them as well. Because a lot of those young men were emotional because we didn't fathom a, a loss. We don't think like that. Um, with Robert Brazil, that's like big brother. That's like uh, uncle. And I feel like I let him down. Like, that's, that's my man. Like, I call a few people before accepting the job to let him know what I was contemplating. And he was one of the ones because I wanted his blessing. And I wanted to understand the lay of the land because I didn't really know a lot about the HBCUs. And he's been there every step of the way. He's done things that you don't even understand, but he's been there for me to give me guidance and comfort and love and wisdom. And I sincerely love him. And I feel as though I let him down. And that, that's gonna be with me for the rest of my life. I, I love him that much. It's, he was in, he's in the meetings on Friday just to be there for us. He's always there. Whatever he could make the games, he's there. And the, the young men love him, not because of what he's accomplished, but who he is to us. And uh, I just feel that way. So for everything that you did, how, how do you feel like you let him down? For everything you accomplished? We lost, man. We lost twice. I'm a winner. I know I don't just measure. I'm sorry, sis. I, I just got to complete it. I apologize. I don't measure everything by W's and L's because, you know, graduation rate, um, people staying out of trouble legally. I think we have several kids that are fathers. I want them to be great fathers. You can't measure that kind of stuff. But, you know, not, not winning, you measure that kind of stuff. But I feel like we've, we've won, but we didn't win that game. But I, that's just me. I just feel like I let them down, and that hurts. I love him that much. I want to make note to a man that's been there for me. Uh, you know, throughout all this, I've lost several people through this short journey of Jackson. And uh, my pastor was one of them. And God sent me another man that uh, has filled that void and then some. Is Pastor Smith, you here? Um, God, I love you, my brother.
They don't understand what, what that dealt with in the hospital, do they? They have no clue. But you did, and you were there. And you came every, every time I needed you. Pick up the phone every time I call you. So a lot of things we, we may seem to make it seem like it's easy, but it's not easy spiritually or physically or psychologically or emotionally. But God will send you a man and, and God send you. So I just wanted to recognize you in your city, in your town, and let you know, let you know how much you mean to me. I love you, Pastor. We good, sis? Hey, guys, uh, some of you I may never run across again. I hope I do. Dr. Gaville, I love you, colors. Thank you. Wouldn't change the game up on them. <laughs> hey, but let me tell you something. We would have never gotten to the level that we've gotten to if it had not been for y'all. Um, the good and the bad. You know, some of y'all just got a negative pen and you're going to do what you do. God bless you. I need you too. <laughs> I need y'all too. Because then another guy with a positive pen going to uh, flip that whole thing. But thank you um, just for shining light on HBCUs. I'm not walking away. I'm going to still always love HBCUs in my time. Um, Ashley Robinson gave me an opportunity that was phenomenal, and I was able to maximize my moments. But if it had not been for those opportunities, I probably wouldn't have seen, received those other opportunities that I have received. So I'm forever in debt. I'm going to miss the sonic boom with all my heart, Dr. Little, um, our cheerleaders. I mean, so many people. I can't be on uh, to have a roll call. But I thank y'all, each and every last one of y'all for what you've contributed. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, anybody that has ever reported, not on just me, but HBCUs and uplift this whole movement. The movement don't stop with a man, although it may have started. The movement gonna continue with a plan. I'm gonna say that again. The movement don't stop with a man, although it may have started like that. But the movement is gonna continue with a plan. God bless. God bless. What a football game. Um, two great teams um, battling. That was a championship, national championship caliber type game right there. Um, hats off to, to Jackson State University. Um, obviously a very talented, well-coached team, and uh, they had a great season. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I thought our staff did a heck of a job of getting these guys prepared. And... Um, Aside from, you know, schematically and, and everything, you know, you got to pour into these men uh, mentally as well. And, and you know, they see some of the clippings and, and, you know, you hear some of what people say about us and them and, you know, all that stuff. And we talk about uh, being great. And being great here starts with belief. Believing in yourself, believing in the program, the play calling your teammates. Um, and I just, you know, I'm so proud of my guys. Um, I'm so happy for my university. And, you know, like I always said, since, you know, since last week at the press conference, it's so much bigger than me. You know, it's about North Carolina State University, first and foremost. And it's about the MEAC. And uh, I'm just a piece of it. You know, I just, I'm the spokesman for, for our program. But I take my hat off to our guys. I love them to death. Um, you know, they had a chip on their shoulder. You know, the, dis dis the disrespect was real uh, since we've been down here. We come to the press conference, and many of you were here last week. You know, the their athletic director addressed us as, as North Carolina a and State University. I mean, come on. You know, we, we pull up to a dinner the other night. You know, buses won't move. They got to drop our guys off in the middle of the street. Pre-game, we're supposed to come out at a certain time before uh, the national anthem. For whatever reason, the team wasn't ready, so they stopped everything. My guys sat in a tunnel for 10 minutes in pre-game, waiting to come out. But it don't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, we're a resilient group. Um... We play, we play good football, and I said that before, and, and I'm proud of my guys. But um, like I said, they're going to put some respect in our name in, in black college, and I think they're going to do that now. Mia Berry with Anscape Coach, congratulations. Yes, ma'am, thank you. First part, you won the inaugural cricket celebration. Bradshaw Bowl as an assistant coach. How does it feel being this homegrown kid that's bringing it home to your alma mater in second half? You said Central wasn't doing anything different. You were going to play your brand of football. We saw a little trickery around, along the way. Can you talk into what went into some of those trick plays and the decision making? Right. Um, 
you know, this this means so much. The folks, you know, the Chancellor administration brought me back. Uh, obviously, I, I'm an alum and my parents went to Oklahoma Central. So, you know, I it, I had a chip on my shoulder and I, you know, I had a little motivation to try to uh, get North Carolina Central back on top. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, that I had an opportunity to come back and lead this program. And, and I'm humbled and it's an honor. You know, I don't take it lightly at all. And um, as far as our game plan for the day, I told, you know, folks, if we're going to do what we do, and we run the football. And we, we're, we're a physical football team, and it starts up front. Uh, so we let our guys, Mookie and, and, and uh, Pee Wee, run that rock today. And, um, you know, we, we saw some things that were open and, and we were able to take advantage of. I thought the, the, the fake punt uh, changed the, the course of the game. And then, um, obviously, the two-point play late, uh, throw back to Pee Wee. Um, you know, we work, we talk situations all the time. And, and we got to be prepared for every situation uh, when it comes to this game. So that was a play we've been running for a while and uh, thought it was there. The guys executed it. Coach Ernest Rex, MCNV Sports. I'm sorry, where are you, buddy? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you noticed all the disrespect, right? Um, and if you were able to kind of talk to us about it, that means you noticed that you saw it. Uh, did you point it out to your team before the game to let them know what was going on, or did you just? Um, they saw it. They the ones sitting on the bus. They the ones that got put out in the middle of the street. They saw it. They saw that we got we were sitting in the tunnel ten minutes before we come out. You know, you got everybody in America has a script that we go by. All right, we play on national television. It's the first time I've seen script change. So I didn't have to say anything to them about it. You know, we control what we can control. Bottom line. And nothing's given to you. If you want something, you got to go take it. And, um, you know, we deal with adversity all the time. And that's, that's such as life. So we're not going to sit here and complain about this, complain about that. You want, you know, you want something to change, do something about it. Bottom line. Johnny Cole from HBCU Stroll. Uh, you know, I'm a former coach myself. Hey, what's going on? I tell you, I, I watch you from the time you came on the field, and I want to say that you and your coaching staff, man, I mean, I've never seen a very coach from the time you came out to the time you finished the game. The calmness on you that I've seen just through the whole course of the game, was it something about watching film for two weeks? I think you guys got a chance to watch that it was about something about Jackson State that you knew that y'all could attack and to be able to win the football game. You you seemed so confident about that we were going to win this football game. Uh, yeah, I was confident. Um, it wasn't more so, so what we saw with Jackson State. It was our guys. And, and um, I said we have a good football team, a great football team. And I, I said that we didn't really truly have that. I, I shouldn't say it anymore to Star Power because we got player of the years and all this FCS All Americans, but it's more so about team and team chemistry and things of that nature. And I, I've seen our guys grow every week from the beginning of the season, and we continue to get better. I saw over the last two weeks we had really, really good practices. Um, so the guys knew what was at stake. The guys were hungry, and we had something to prove today. And um, you know, you play a really good football team. And this is an opportunity for our guys to come in here and be the 12-0 and 0 football team and let folks know that we're as advertised. We come in here, and we weren't even picked at the beginning of the season in the top 10 in black college football. It was 10 teams that y'all picked that were better than us. So our guys had a chip on their shoulder since August. Now, schematically, when we come in here, uh, we knew they liked to bring pressure. We knew they were a very physical football team, and they were athletic. Uh, so that's when we had more of the quarterback design runs, to get the plus one, um, you know, to get an extra hat in the run game. But I thought our um, game plan was, was – Matt Leone, my offensive coordinator, did a great job. For us to rush for 276 yards and on people right there, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So um, – and it starts up front with the offensive line. And, you know, but I'm very pleased it wasn't more so about Jackson. It was about North Carolina Central. Hey, Coach um, Kendrick Marshall, SEC Sports. Oh, yeah, start, buddy. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah, start the game, you guys threw deep against Travis Hunter. You got a big play, and you guys ran right at JSU interior front, which has been the strength of their team for the last two years. What message did that send for you guys to be so aggressive on, on those two moments? Okay, again, it was about us and about our game. I mean, what we do. And we weren't going to run. I, I respect Travis Hunter. He's a great football player. But at the same time, we can't go 60 minutes and not throw at him, okay? So it wasn't like we were just trying to take a shot at him to prove anything, no. Um, 
that's what we, you know, the progression, that was was open. Uh, the receiver make, had made a, you know, we had a good throw, great catch. Um, running the ball in between the tackles. Again, like I said in the press conference, we're going to do what we do. And, you know, we, we got a strain with the offensive line. We can't put in a whole new offense. So at some point, offensive line is going to be all against them. You got a strain and win your one-on-one -on -one battle. And guys uh, took pride in what they were doing. And, um, you know, we executed Rafael Haynes with the three-point conversion. You talked about how media, the viewers learned about you all. But what did you learn about your team, and not just your team, but yourself as a coach this year? Mm. How can I say this and be humble? <laughs> I, I said, man. I, you know, I've been I've been a part of really good teams, mm. and I've won championships. And um, I learned from one of the best, Rod Broadway, uh, Sam Washington. Them, them dudes are like my dad, my fathers. Uh, got a lot of respect. Me, buddy, Pew and I are very close. So I've seen the formula. I've seen what it takes. And I've been around really good teams, and I've won championships in three different conferences: Black College National, National Championships in the SWAC, CIAA, and EMEA. So. Um, it's about, you know, sticking to the formula, getting good, you know, really good people with you. Uh, I knew the guys that we had in that locker room. So, you know, I really didn't learn anything. Uh, them guys, I've seen them. I know them. I know their heart. I know what they're about. We recruit them. And they babies. They young. We got all Both these guys coming back next year. Mm -hmm. They're not seniors. Yep. You look at that roster. High school kids. Young men. Excuse me. High school young men. That bought into our system, bought into our scheme, and have developed. And that comes from our strength staff, our support staff, and everybody at North Carolina Central University pouring into them. Now, obviously, we have the culture here. We got a great foundation. Yeah, we can go find us one or two, you know, transfers. But we built this thing with high school young men. Trayvon Gray, Atlanta Journal Constitution. Obviously, we talked about the fake punt, the reverse, and plays like that. How much impact do those big plays have on the momentum of the game? And that was so close throughout. You know, when when uh, it's a one possession game and it's back and forth, and you're driving, and, and defense finally gets a stop, and and you know we I thought moved the ball pretty good in the first half, and then defense they, defense gets a stop on us, and then boom, you hit them with a fake punt, and defense got to come back on the field. You know, that, that wears on you, especially your psyche. Um, and, you know, kind of you got to keep people on their heels. So we have some more stuff uh, cooking, too, now. We have one or two more. Gary Jones from BMA Sports. Last week, I talked about coaching experience. And I think I highlighted 20 years, you say 20 years, coaching experience. After the game, I talked to Mr. Buddy Pugh. I said, how dear having the experience win this game. And he just smiled. So this two years straight, do you think experience, coaching experience, won this game again? Mm. Um, I don't think it was more so coaching experience. Uh, really execution. Uh, being able to run the football. They, ran, they rushed for 68 yards to our 276. They throw the ball. They threw the ball for three forty nine. Okay, it's you. You can. You're gonna win games throwing the ball, but you to win championships, you gotta be able to run the ball. Okay, uh, when you run the ball, you can keep Shador off the field. Mm -hmm. We had that was our game plan. How do you stop him? How do you stop the offense? Keep him on the sideline. Yes, sir. We had thirty eight minutes of time possession to their twenty one. First half, first quarter, ten minutes to their four minutes. So they they had they beat the top possession in the fourth quarter, but that was that was the game plan. If I can run the football and keep them on the sidelines, we're gonna be in good shape. That's right. Stephen Gate, their HBCU game day coach. Uh, congratulations! You told us back in Norfolk uh, a couple of months ago. Here we are. But um, talk about Davius. Um, you guys will be forever linked. Um, just talk about what it was that you saw in him initially, and then today when the game was over, kind of. I'm guessing this is coming that coming to fruition. Um, when you get a chance to see him, you see how mild mannered he is, how humble he is. Um, obviously, he has all the you know uh, physical attributes to, to be great. But you know, he's a leader, 
and, and he's not going to be definitely not going to be too high, get too low. Uh, I mean, just a great young man. Um, and he's a warrior. The kid had surgery on his finger, on his hand two weeks ago. All right, we broke his finger uh, the last game of the season. Bad snap, reached down. Uh, the doctors couldn't wait till after the season to fix the ligaments in there. Uh, so he had surgery uh, on his non thorn hand. So he did this right here today and ran the ball for over 100 yards, whatever he did. All that today uh, just coming right off of surgery. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Paul Briggs, MEAC Sports. Um, Coach, last year you guys was in the MEAC SWAT Championship game at the beginning. Challenge at the beginning, and now to be in the Cricket Celebration Bowl Championship game a season later. Talk about the journey going from the beginning of the season now playing at the MEAC Swag and the end of the season. They talk about it starts in the A and ends in the A. And um, for you to be able to play a, a great opponent like Alcorn State last year, and, and what Coach McNair has done with that program, you know, that, they, they have a great program, and, and they're very athletic. And, and I'm, I mean, you're going to have a battle when you play them guys. Uh, and then, you know, here, and I was messing with alumni last night, you know, shoot, they talk about getting to Atlanta, get to Atlanta. Well, we here, you know, let's talk about you got to win in Atlanta. So um, for us to come back down here and play here again, uh, can't say enough about this. Y'all look at the energy in that building. Uh, uh, the NFL commissioners in here, it's a sellout. Uh, the energy in there. And then people want to talk about playoffs. Like how the Ivers say, playoffs? <laughs> Practice. Come on, man. I mean, let, let's, let's be real. But, I mean, that's an unbelievable experience uh, to be able to play. For our guys to have the opportunity to play here in this. And um, the bands were rocking. I mean, that's what black college football is all about. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. And um, uh, I'm happy for our guys to be able to have opportunity to experience that. Last one, could do. One more right here. I'm sorry. Jasher, I'm sorry. Okay. Shakira Martin with me at Sports Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Just walk us through what this game and this win does for the MEAC conference, especially on the platform that was basically set for the SWAC. Your players talked about how when they came in, the spotlight was on them. They were able to chill and do what they do best. What does this do for the conference? I mean, it'll continue to show everybody that we play really good football in our conference. I mean, I don't expect a whole, you know, a whole lot of change and. When we get back to Durham, the roads be paved cold, nothing like that. But um, <laughs> I can, Kyle. But um, I mean, again, we further prove that we play really good football in our conference. Bottom line. And I'm sorry, what was the second part of the count? Question. Just what does it do for the conference? Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's it. I mean, it, um, and again, we didn't have much pressure on us. Um, and you know, we humble. We just play the game, man. We don't need to do all that talking. You know, we let our work speak for itself. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Hold on one second. I'll only answer this question if he has a me at Polo Show. No, I, I want a North Carolina Central Championship. That was my <laughs> shirt now. Since you're going uh, really hard like that. And I wanted, I wanted to say um, it's been a pleasure to follow you back at the beginning in Norfolk. And you talked about the journey and, and concluding it uh, right here in Atlanta with the Celebration Bowl. As I asked some of the players, there's a limited opportunity to win a championship, whether that's at the interscholastic level, in a collegiate level, or the professional level. You've done that now. Talk about how you feel about taking the journey. Well, you know, that's that's the the fun part. When you see that, you know, you come from, you know, our struggles from when I first got here in 19, to we improved, but then we struggled here. And then, you know, people kind of counted us out when we lost to South Carolina State this past year. So, um, I think that's what that's what makes men is when you have to go through adversity, and that's what makes teams. Um, and it's hard to win, teams. and I've been blessed to win several of them, a lot of them. But uh, that's one thing, like you said, nobody can ever take away from these young men their legacy. You know, when they come back 10, 20 years of homecoming, or they whatever they're telling their story to their kids, man. You know, we had a ten-win season. We won the at We won the Celebration Bowl. Who y'all play? Daddy, who y'all play? We play Jackson State. So um, you can't take it away from these guys, and they work for it. They earned it. And, um, you know, I love them guys, man. I'm so happy for them that they have an opportunity to experience championship, and we win that thing and bring it back to Durham. Thanks, Ghost. Appreciate your time. Thank you guys for your coverage.